Well, let's have a look at curves. Uh, when I create a curve, it's always created on the construction plane. Uh, and indeed, it's often better to create it on one in one of the orthographic views. So I'm going to press space and three together to get into an orthographic view with the y-axis pointing upwards. And then let's click my curve tool. And there are a couple of ways that we can create curves. First of all, we can choose between polygon, NURBS, and Bezier curves. I'm not really going to cover Bezier curves. Let's start with a NURBS curve. And then there are different methods for creating a curve. The first one I'll look at is freehand. And that means that as I click and hold and drag my mouse around, it creates uh, this curve. Let me just dive down into the object. And we can see that it's got a list of the points here, and it's creating that curve. And I can, for example, increase the smoothness of this curve so it interprets it more smoothly. I can increase the tolerance, which allows it to slip further and further away from the points that I actually defined to produce a smoother curve. It's not that often that this method of producing curves is useful. So let's delete that. And there's another one there. Let's delete that. And let's use one of the other methods. So I'm going to create a polygonal curve. Actually, let's start with the NURBS curve. And then uh, let's have a look at the CVs method. So CVs means control vertices. I'm just going to make sure I'm on the grid here. So let me lay down some control vertices. Now you'll notice that as I lay down the first few points, nothing happened. And that is because a NURBS curve has a certain order. It needs a certain number of points to, to know what it looks like. And by default, that order is four. So you have to lay down four uh, points before it starts appearing. And we can stop building the curve like this. Now, you'll see that when that curve is constructed, it's not actually going through these points that I laid down. Now, those points are defining that curve, uh, but it's not going through them. So what happens if I want to create a curve uh, which does go through the points? Let me lay down a curve again. And this time, let me change the method to breakpoints, and I'm going to lay down a NURBS curve. And this time, we can see... For a start, it started straight away to create the line. And secondly, those points are in fact all on the curve. And that's because Houdini is creating the control vertices necessary uh, to create a curve which passes through those points. Let me delete that again. And this time let's lay down a polygonal curve. And with a polygonal curve, there's really not much difference between CVs and breakpoints. So I'm going to use CVs. And as you can see, this just draws straight lines between the points that we define. When you have finished creating a curve, uh, you can actually change the points, uh, the position of the points. So I can let's turn this off. I can move this around like so. I can also add points by shift clicking either on the lines here, so I'm adding points here, or if I shift click outside, I create a point nearest to the end point which I click. So in this case, I'm starting there, let's stop building the curve again, and then let's shift click here, and we can see this time it comes out of that end point. That only works for single points. If I was to select maybe uh, three of these points and then hit T to translate them, we can see we get an edit stop. So you can only address single points as part of the curve. This uh, curve is obviously open, that is the, the ends are not joined. I can, it won't make much sense with this curve because it overlaps itself, but I can close the curve like that by selecting close here. Well, you can change the type of the curve after uh, you've constructed it, so I can make this into a NURBS curve. What happens if I want to convert 
the NURBS curve into a polygonal curve. So I want to keep the nice smooth shape of the NURBS curve, but I want to make it into polygons. Well, I can use the convert, uh, convert node, and I can convert from a NURBS curve to a polygon surface. And we can see that that's created a huge number of small polygonal sides to create that curve. And we can take this down, so make it 0.1. In fact, the V direction doesn't matter in this case, or so 0.01. And this reduces the number of divisions that are being used. So reduce the U divisions here will create a slightly rougher curve with fewer points. Well, let me create another curve. And uh, to do that using the tool and to have it show up here in the same geometry node, I need to change this option here to create in context. And let's lay down another curve. And I'm going to just lay down a few more polygonal points like that. What happens if I want to join uh, these two curves together. Well, the first thing I need to do is merge. If I don't merge uh, the bits of geometry together, then the join operation is not going to work. So they've now been merged into a single item. And what I can do then is with my cursor over the 3D view, type tab, and then start typing join. And this invites me to select the one curve and then the next one. And then I can accept the selection. And we can see that that has indeed joined them. It's combined those two endpoints into an endpoint which is more or less in the middle of where they were. I can show you that by having this merge highlighted here. And we can see that the two ends were here. There are a couple of ways of uh, adjusting this. There's a bias parameter that uh, decides whether we're nearer to one end or the other, and by default we're in the middle. And then the tolerance parameter creates extra points and moves it. So if tolerance is zero, it's actually creating an extra bit of uh, geometry here to join these up. If tolerance is one, it's just snapping the points together. And we can see, uh, by the way, if we middle click here, that we had two primitives. Those are the two different curves. And at the end here, we just have one primitive because the curves have been joined. Now, sometimes uh, you'll find uh, that this connects the wrong ends, uh, in which case uh, you need to click, click, connect closest ends, and that will correct the problem. So if you find that the wrong ends are being connected, try using that. You can also wrap first to last. Again, it doesn't really work here, but that's joining the other end so that the both ends of the curve are joined. Well, let's uh, get rid of this and start again. And I'm going to create a curve this time, which is going to be closed. So I can either click close over here, or I can right click while I'm building the curve and I can select close curve. And there we have it. Now, if a curve is closed, and I haven't finished building this yet, so I need to stop. If a curve is closed, then it immediately becomes a polygonal face, which is why this is being shaded. And I just want to, let's leave it open for the moment. Uh, another way of closing it, other than using this option here, let's assume you built the curve and you couldn't uh, close it using this option for some reason, is to use an ends SOP. So we can use an ends SOP, and this takes a single curve and closes it. So this is going to close it like that. Now, what happens if we have a closed curve? and we don't want it closed anymore, well, I can open it like that. And that takes the last point and the next to last point and disconnects them. I can also do something called unroll. And unroll 
means that although this now looks like a complete curve uh, that's joined, in fact we have two points at the end here, which is meaning that it's not actually a complete closed curve, and as a result a polygonal face is not being created, this is just a curve. And we can see that if we switch on point numbers, and we can probably just see here that there are two point numbers superimposed on top of each other just here, and that's because we've created that extra point. Note that uh, you can also preserve the shape if we were to, let me just uh, open this again, if this, and actually let's make it into a NURBS curve. Now if I was to try and close this NURBS curve, like so, we can see that it changes quite a lot of the shape around here. I can try preserving the shape, and that will create a quite a weird pattern here, but sometimes it's useful to preserve the shape. So let's look next at how to add a point at a particular place on a curve or split a curve. So I'm going to reopen this, so let's leave it open. And the SOP we need uh, is called the Carve SOP. So let me lay one down. And this allows us to choose a U value. At the moment we can see that all it's doing, let me just click that, we can seems to have created a problem. Let me go back here. So, with uh, this turning red, we can move it round, and as we move it round, we can see this U value is changing. And what this is basically doing is cutting the curve at a particular U point. As you'll remember, uh, U is a, is a coordinate uh, which exists on all curves, uh, and the U value of one end is zero, and right at the other end, the U value is 1. So as we move this round, we can see it goes from 0 to 1. We could have a second point here, and we could move this around too to create a, a subset of the curve. What happens if we just want to split the curve at a particular point? Uh, well, we move this point to the point we want to split it at. And then if we go down here to the cut, we just keep the inside and the outside. And if we have a look here, we should be able to see there are in fact two points here now have been created where we uh, ended that U value. And if I, sorry, if I select one of those and then translate it, we can see that uh, we can move the two apart. So let's have a look now at how to add points to your curve. And this is something you actually want to do quite often uh, in modeling. And there are a couple of ways that you can do it in Houdini. First of all, for a polygonal curve like this, you have a SOP called Resample. So let's have a look at that. If I put this down, we can see instantly it introduces a huge number of additional points to this geometry. Uh, and the reason it's introducing a huge number is because we're adding points according to a maximum segment length. So every 0.1 units, it's adding a new point. If I increase this value, we can see that the number of points disappear. We could also add using maximum segments. So in this case, we can indeed reduce or increase the number of points in our curve. I think we started off here with 11 points, so we could go down to, say, seven points. It's not going to be a very accurate representation of our curve in this case, uh, but it does show you how you can uh, try and keep the shape of a curve while reducing the number of points. The resample SOP only really works uh, with polygons. If I was to convert this back into a NURBS curve, well, you can see that straight away, although we had a NURBS curve here, uh, when we get to the end of the resample SOP, it's become a polygonal curve. And that's what the resample SOP does. It takes the NURBS curve and converts it into a polygonal curve. And this is another way to do the conversion. You can specify, therefore, the number of points uh, that you want to use in that conversion of the NURBS curve. So, uh, for example, that's, that's actually using a, a segment length to do that. Or I could say that I want to convert it using 
20 points or something and we can see that we get a representation using 20 points. Well let's have a look now at another way of achieving the same thing briefly uh, and that is the refine SOP uh, and it's probably less flexible really than the resample SOP. Certainly if you have a polygonal curve you'll want to use the resample SOP probably. But it does have one advantage which is that you can control uh, the area of your curve on which the new points are added using u and v values as we did for the carve SOP. So in this case uh, let's have a look. Let's put new points here between these two points. Starting off with the NURBS curve then, uh, in order to add more points I just increase the number of U divisions like this and we can see that we're getting an increasing number of points. If I was to convert this to back to a polygonal curve, uh, it's more or less the same thing happens. We get these points spread out here uh, along the edges between the two points. We can also unrefine and let me just demonstrate how that works first of all by moving this back to being a NURBS curve and then let's make it the full range of our curve so make this 0 and 1 and let's increase the number of divisions usually let's, let's put it up to say 100 points more or less. So that's a hugely complex curve. If I lay down an Oops, a further refined SOP. I'm going to use this to reduce the number of points that are on my curve. And I do that by, first of all, making sure the full length of my curve is selected. And then if I select unrefine, uh, we can see, in fact, instantly uh, what it's done is reduce this back to the minimum number of points needed to define the curve. Uh, we've got back to 10 points that are needed to define the curve. You can control just how accurately it reduces the number of points in your curve using this tolerance U value here. So if I were to increase this hugely, yes, you can see that uh, the model gets a lot more, the curve gets a lot less accurate, uh, but we're also using fewer points, six points in this case. So that's how you can add and remove points from a curve. Well, let's look now at another common task for curves, which is to intersect two curves and cut one curve with another curve. And I'm going to need two curves for this. I've, I've drawn out a slightly simpler curve here already. And I want to lay down another curve inside the same uh, geometry object. And I can do that by making sure that my tool options here are set to create in context. And then instead of creating a new object at the scene level, it'll just add whatever I do here in this same context. So let me click the curve tool and that should now allow me to draw out another curve which we can see here. And the tool I want to use is called Curve Sect. So let's lay one of those down. And this works both for NURBS and polygonal curves. And let's... Uh, you wire one curve into one or entry and the other into the other input and we can control which bits this is now being split into four parts so we can keep all of one curve and perhaps the odd, ne odd numbered parts of the other curve I need to make sure that I haven't templating everything anything otherwise this won't show up so I can now see that uh, I've chopped off the bottom part of this curve or I could chop off uh, the top part like this or I could keep all of this and I can chop off a part of the other curve. Let me just lay down a null just to make sure that we're seeing this correctly. Uh, there we are. We can now see that in fact that is correctly chopping off the curve. Or I can keep the even number ones which will chop off the other part. So this allows you to intersect two curves and to cut them. So let's now quickly demonstrate a technique that's available for NURBS curves that isn't available for polygonal curves really, uh, and that is the fillet operation. So let me just, I've drawn out two NURBS curves here. Let's merge them together. And with my uh, cursor over the 3D view, I can select NURBS and then fillet. You won't be able to see it, it's not on the screen, but there's a fillet operation. Then it invites me to select curves to fill it. I can accept the selection 
and we can see it introduces this extra curve between the existing curves which I can then alter the shape of using these selectors here. I can also alter the UV position of where the fillet is starting from so I can move it down the curve here like this similarly with this one and we can create a, a different shaped curve than the original two curves so that can be useful if you're working in NURBS. Let me demonstrate quickly another couple of ways to get curve data into Houdini. One of which is to use the file SOP. And you can, in fact, load in. If we have a look at the options here, we can see that we have .ai files. Uh, that means Adobe Illustrator format. So you can load in Adobe Illustrator encapsulated postscript as different ways of loading in curves into Houdini. Let's cancel that. Another interesting SOP is called the Trace SOP. Let's lay one of those down. And that enables you to trace a curve from an image. So I've got an image I prepared earlier. And in fact, we can see it here in the composite view. It's just the letter A, uh, white on a black background. and if we can see here, what's happening here is we've bought in this image and it is succeeding in tracing that and creating a curve that goes all the way around it. Uh, we can see, unfortunately, that the middle bit is filled in uh, and we may be able to sort that out by saying whole faces, and we have, and we can see that that's now correctly creating the internal of our A. So that's another way of bringing in a curve that you don't necessarily want to lay down by hand. Well, let's look now at how you can render curves. And I've got a curve here, which is a closed polygonal curve. Let's have a look at it. And I've assigned, or I will assign this red constant shader to it. Uh, and obviously, when you've got a curve that is a solid polygonal object here, that will just render out as a solid polygonal object. If you want it to render as the curve, just the outline of that, uh, we're going to need to use that trick with the ends sob. And we're either going to need to open the curve, or we're going to have to unroll it. And the same thing happens. Now we can see we've got a width of our curve here. It's a bit thick for my liking. How do we go about changing that? Well, uh, we need to put a point or polygonal attribute on, and we need to use an attribute create to do that. And the attribute that controls the width of the rendered curve is called width. So it's going to disappear because my width is zero, but if I in increase my width, we can see that that now increases the width. We could have this as a primitive attribute. The same thing applies. So that controls how wide my uh, curve is. We can, of course, uh, mess about with this a little bit more. So let me put this back to white. Uh, then it's got tint with point color enabled. So I can then, in the object view here, lay down a color SOP and make it a point color and make it some random colors. And we can see now that that's being colored in with random colors as we go around the curve because each point has got a different color attribute attached to it. Another way to render curves as uh, separate from the polygons they contain, and let me just change this back to a closed curve, uh, is to use a 
polywire SOP. And a polywire SOP actually, rather than being a render time feature, actually creates new geometry uh, to, and let's have a look at this in fact in the scene view here. Uh, maybe we can't see this very well. Polywire creates actual new geometry. And we can see, let's go into wireframe mode, we can see that that has actually created a three-dimensional object from our curve. And we can control various aspects of how that's done here. And that will then render out as before, except in this case, it's a three-dimensional object. This is, however, quite a costly operation uh, if you can possibly just cope with the render time rendering of curves using a width attribute that's much faster and much more efficient. Well, that brings me to the end of this quick tour of the curve features in Houdini 11. I hope it's been useful.